can't be in at your service. I'll take on any job. For the right price. Hunting is a complicated profession. Don't you agree? What do we know about the infamous bounty hunter Cad Bane? What was his story after we saw him in the Clone Wars, and when will we see him again, and what connection, if any, does he have with the Mandalorian? Today we're taking a closer look at the most infamous bounty hunter from the time between Jango and Boba Fett, and going over everything we know about Cad Bane in canon. Perhaps your reputation has been exaggerated. I want a rogue class starfighter, with elite weapons, cloaking device, the works. Oh, and triple my usual rate. Cad Bane was a blue Juros bounty hunter during the Clone Wars who quickly rose to the top in his field after the death of Jango Fett. Capitalizing on the Clone Wars conflict, Bane's work made him incredibly expensive and changed the course of the war more than once. The first chronological appearance of Bane came in the Darth Maul comic. Before the invasion of Naboo, Bane played a discreet role in the Sith's plans to initiate the war. Bane was hired by Darth Maul to aid in the acquisition of the Jedi Padawan Eldrakaitis and hand her over to the Sith as a potential dark side apprentice. While the kidnapping was an initial success, Kytus escaped and entered into a duel with the Sith Apprentice. Maul won the duel, making Kytus the first Jedi to be slain by a Sith in over a thousand years. During the time of the Clone Wars, Bane took great advantage of the conflict, hiring out his services at exorbitant rates. Most often we saw him hired by the Confederacy of Independent Systems and, of course, the Hutt Cartel. The bounty hunter was even hired by the Dark Lord Sidious himself. Darth Sidious contracted Bane to retrieve a Jedi holocron and kyber crystal, aiming to use these to begin his Inquisitorium ahead of schedule. I foresee an army of force talented spies in my service, trained in the dark side to peer into every corner of the galaxy from afar. And my enemies would be helpless against such vision. While the Jedi arrived in time to rescue the targets, Bane was initially successful, having stolen the holocron, the crystal, and two of the three Force-sensitive targets. Later, Cad Bane was hired by the Hutt Cartel to retrieve Zero the Hutt from a prison on Coruscant. By taking the Senate Building's East Wing hostage, Bane was able to negotiate the release of Zero, even though Anakin Skywalker eventually managed to rescue the hostages, Bane had enough countermeasures in place to ensure that he's still left alive with his target in tow. Some point following this, Bane purposefully allowed himself to be arrested by the Republic with the nefarious goal of building a team of criminals from the inside. Bane had been hired to orchestrate the prison break of Moralo Ival, a criminal mastermind in league with Count Dooku and the Separatists. After a successful prison break, Bane was eventually put in charge of the mission to kidnap the Chancellor. That plan was thwarted, however, when one of the criminals in Bane's employ revealed himself to be none other than Obi-Wan Kenobi in disguise. Everybody quiet. I've got a call to make. Like many bounty hunters, Bane made use of a variety of tools and weapons in his career. Most bounty hunters were not trained in the Force. These tools helped them to remain competitive in a war against Jedi and Force sensitives, as almost all of his tools were designed to counteract the Force in some way. 
Most of Bane's gadgets were controlled by an electronic van brace that allowed him to activate the tools in his arsenal. Bane's boots featured rocket boosters, specifically designed to help him keep up with the mobility of Jedi targets. They allowed him to hover for a short time, but were less airborne than Mandalorian jetpacks and more designed for quick traversal and platforming. He carried binding wire, which could be thrown onto a target's legs to immobilize them, which was particularly effective when evading or hunting Jedi. One of the most interesting aspects of Bane's arsenal was his breathing apparatus. The breather is visually confusing as it does not appear to bring in oxygen into his mouth, but is mounted on the side of his face. Adding to confusion is the fact that Juros do not normally need to use breathers in standard atmosphere, and we often see Bane operate without it telling us that it's not necessary for his survival. However, the purpose of Bane's breather is far more clever than any standard usage. According to Wikipedia, the breather tubes were actually designed to counteract the dangers of being force choked, bringing air directly into his lungs, bypassing his neck entirely. This was yet another tool specifically designed to nullify the dangers of the force and keep Bane one step ahead of any tricky Jedi or Probably Sith. Enough of this. Vader, release him. As you wish. <clears throat> Bane also commanded the services of Tudu Toto. Toto 360, a techno service droid who proved himself invaluable in many of Bane's missions. Get the door. I am a techno service droid, not a butler droid. Damn it, Toto. You are what I say you are. Toto was able to be uploaded with the critical mission data and hack enemy security systems in order to allow Bane to access his target. Bane also made use of his droid as a distraction and proved quite a nuisance in combat. Some butter droid you turned out to be. I am a techno service droid. Aside from the gadgets in his arsenal, Bane also carried a pair of LL30 plaster pistols. Morning, Senators. And of course, how could we fail to mention that hat? While the wide-brimmed hat didn't serve any tactical purpose, it was nonetheless a key part of his persona. Nice hat. Where did you get it? Unlike many hunters, such as Boba Fett, Cad Bane rarely worked alone. While this could be interpreted to speak poorly of his personal capabilities, Bane was a master delegator. Many times throughout his career, we see him put together teams specifically tailored for the job at hand. He was able to size up the strengths and weaknesses of other hunters and assign them to perfect tasks set to their skill set. With much of the work being dedicated to preparation, this made the majority of Bane's jobs dependent on coordination and simultaneous execution. Come on. Let's get going. The last we heard of Cad Bane was in the Kane and Jarvis comic series, where it was revealed that he supplied the plans needed to bomb the Jedi Temple. But where is he now? While there is an unfinished episode of The Clone Wars that saw Bane fall to Boba Fett in a shootout that left Boba's Durasteel helmet permanently dented, we do not have any canon confirmation about his end. With The Clone Wars on Disney+, Plus, it was confirmed at Star Wars Celebration 2019 that we will be getting finalized version of The Clone Wars 7th season. The footage we've seen from the trailers even confirms a conclusion to the Mandalorian story arc, possibly modified to tie into The Mandalorian series. While it's possible we will get a finalized rendition of the shootout between Bane and Fett, this episode may also be cut to allow Bane to make an appearance somewhere else in the Star Wars universe, possibly even the Mandalorian. We know the Mandalorian draws much of its backstory from the Clone Wars. We also know that Bane often worked with the Hut cartels, the same cartels that formerly employed Fennec Shand, the target of the Mandalorian Chapter 5, the Gunslinger. Is it possible that Cad Bane could actually be the titular gunslinger, a mysterious figure at the employs of the huts once again, or perhaps even hired to retrieve the child? With the contents we're promised to see on Disney+, Plus, one thing is for sure, we can reasonably expect to see Cad Bane again very soon.
Sorry to bother you, Chancellor, but I've taken control of the East Wing of your Senate building, and the occupants are now my hostages. Bounty hunting is a complicated profession. Don't you agree?